of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in His tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says. Seek His face. Your face, Lord, do I see. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me. They are breathing out violence. I believe. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmist doesn't pretend that he won't have foes, that he won't have any. There's no idea that if I just get right with God, I will never have an enemy to deal with. He knows very well that enemies are come. When evil sailors assail me, evildoers assail me. He knows we live in a world with broken people and broken promises. And broken people and broken promises lead to real threat. He knows that. He also knows that no threat matches the God of his salvation. He knows that. His heart does not fear, he boasts, even when war rises up against him. It reminds me of Jesus' teaching. Do not fear those who can kill the body. Fear those who can kill the body and the soul. When our lives are so caught up in what it is we fear, so focused on that, and I think the threat is this constant sort of reducing of our confidence in God, an erosion of our confidence that this is the God of my salvation. The more we focus our attention and our, our hearts on these fears that are very real, the less we have to turn our lives over to a God who we believe is also very real, is also very capable of giving us the strength, giving us the comfort, giving us the healing we need, whatever it is we face. Now that is not to say that we don't have and won't have very real, very difficult things in our lives to deal with. What I believe the psalmist is saying and what I believe firmly is that God will win. God will win in this life and God will win in the life to come. Now for some people that will mean the pathology report was not what they wanted to hear and that this life will end in a way they had never imagined. That does not mean God lost. Because God can heal even after this life is done. God will win. The way I, and the way the psalmist continue to know that sort of what Skipper referenced early on today. The psalmist 
was drawn to worship. His faith was fostered by going back to his sanctuary, his place where God is. One thing will I seek after, to be in the house of the Lord. Like so many who on September 16, 2001, rushed into the worship services. But unlike so many who, September 23rd, it began to drift back to the old heaven. The psalmist returned, returned, and returned, so that he could hear again the stories of his God who brought them out of Egypt, out of slavery, through the Red Sea, into the promised land because salvation belongs to the Lord. Whatever it is we face, I think we face it better and we face it together in the presence of God. Listening to God, worshiping God, supporting one another in God. Today's a day of grief. It's a day to honor sacrifice. It's a day to give thanks for service. It's also, like every day, a day to remember the steadfast love of God that will never forsake us. never leave us, and that no enemy can take away. <coughs> in light of that, Eleanor is going to lead us in a litany of remembrance, penitence, and hope. I invite her to come forward and you all to join together. <coughs> light a candle in remembrance for all those who suffered and died on September 11, 2001 in New York, Pennsylvania, and at the Pentagon. In remembering those who still live and who suffer because of the events of that day. When we remember the stockbrokers, office workers, maintenance workers, bystanders, window washers, and all the others who work together so valiantly to help each other, we can say together, We remember great courage. When we recall the firefighters who rushed upstairs as most everyone else was racing out, and when we recall the police officers who stood to protect and defend the people and perform their duties until the towers came crashing down on top of them, we can say together, We remember selfless sacrifice for the safety of others. When we recall the thousands of workers, women and men and young and old, single and married, American-born and those born in countries around the world who did not escape the buildings, we can say together, We remember the loss of human life. When we recall those citizens who rushed to help, did all they could, who stood in line at the nation's blood banks to make living donations from their very bodies, we can say together, We give thanks for those who live on to pass on life and love. When we remember the millions of Americans who gave so generously of their life and labor to endow funds to help the survivors and their families recover from their losses, we can say together, we are grateful for generosity. We light a candle in repentance. Recognizing that we have not done enough to address the source of anger, hate, dehumanization, rage, and indignation that led to acts of violence. In our sadness, horror, and shock, we acknowledge that we 
that our own fears turn murderous and that we have sought revenge, sometimes against even the innocent. We confess and regret our own anger and recognize its dangers to our spirits, our fellow, our community, and our In the midst of the aftermath of the events of September the 11th, 2001, we have been tempted to seek only our own good, hear only our own truth, acknowledging only our own suffering. We know that peace will come to us and to our children only when the concerns of justice anywhere become the subject of political and social will everywhere, and that no justice leads to no peace. In striving for nation, national security and domestic peace, we run the risk of confusing might for right and participating in the very behaviors we condemn. Guard and guide our country that in our search for security we may not trample the rights of the innocent nor disregard the rule of law. Let us not confuse leadership with the global community as the voice for the whole community. Repentance means to turn away from wrong deeds. Repentance means choosing indeed, instead deeds which require moral restraint and are more beneficial to all the persons who suffer. We light a candle. To light the way to a better world for our children and our children's children and all the children of God we recall with joy the unity we felt in the outpouring of health, kindness, thoughtfulness, words and deeds from our at home and around the world. We must hold firmly to our unity, born forward now, not of tragedy, but of loving kindness. We place fresh confidence in international organizations and conversations that bring the diverse gifts of the world to the problems of poverty, injustice, terror, and strife. We long for wise policies that forego short-term gain for long-term stability, justice, and peace. In a decade filled with tragedy, we dare to hope for an era yet to come in which the slaughter of innocence, greed, the ambitions of power, and cultural Racial and religious bigotries are but memories of a dim and unenlightened past. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your mercy, we come to you today remembering those who have lived and died for the sake of peace and the pursuit of justice. We pray, O oh Lord, for the families who continue to grieve their actual members lost, thanking you for their service to you and to a nation. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of us in our nation who have a strong sense of loss, knowing that this has happened and could again. Protect us, O oh Lord, from that. Bring this world to a brighter day day where we would follow your teachings, where all would seek after what is best for one another. Lord, we ask this as servants of yours, followers of yours, children of yours. We ask it in the good and strong name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 